Welcome back to One Block Skyblock. In 100 days, we made a house, but it but it burned down. We also made some lifelong friends, and 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 they died. Uh, but we did defeat the Ender Dragon. And in this 100 days, our goal is to max out our armor, get some Elytra, and slay a Wither. And if you want to play some One Block Skyblock 2, I'll leave all the info below as to how you can play. But before we begin, since the last video, we gained over 150,000 subscribers. So you know what? Let's go for 500k this year. With your help, I know that we can do it. But without further ado, I survived 200 days in One Block Skyblock, and here's what happened. On day 101, I began by saying hi to Chonka, Buster, the villagers, and even Chuba, even though he's not feeling himself right now. Not his alive self, anyway. I went to say hi to all the fish, but I think most of them died somehow. I think they must have suffocated in this pocket of air. I don't know, but I definitely had more than two fish, right? I got up on my horse to show off my moves, and then fed the villagers some more carrots to fix the iron farm and make more golems spawn, and then fed the cows some more wheat because all of these chests need an item frame on them, and that's a lot of dead cows. I went to bed, but as per usual, there's a villager in it, so I started hitting him, but he was immune until I found his weak spot, right in his big squidward nose. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? When I woke up, there were some friends welcoming me back for another 100 days, and then I started placing down some item frames. This is gonna take a while, isn't it? I got straight to mining to see what would happen now I've completed all the phases, and I think it's just an endless phase now. I pretended I was happy to see this pig, but really, I was just charging up my jump attack. After not too long, I had my first ancient debris and my first chest. And needless to say, the chests don't get better with time. They're still trash. I did the same thing with this cow, but in my eyes, it's just kindness. Because at least their last thoughts were happy ones. Another monster party started, but it was all fine. Until I started floating and then realized what I had done. I, I swear, I, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm going to have to change this. Anyway, I grabbed some shulker shells and made my first shulker box. So I used it to cram full of blocks of mind. It's a pretty good process. For some reason, I hit these donkeys and then instantly felt bad, so I fed them wheat. I don't know if that does anything for their health, but it makes a sound, so it must do something. Some iron golems spawned from the villagers and helped me out with my pest problem. And on day 103, I was back to mining and got a new polar bear. So I dragged him into my house where he will be safe. I mean, sure, the last polar bear wasn't safe in my house. And actually, he died. But I'm sure that won't happen again. There's no way that my house is going to burn down again. A blaze will have to spawn first. Really? That's right, my iron boy smacked him while I put out the fire. Teamwork. Why are there so many things that shouldn't be in the farm in the farm? On day 104, I met this dude who constantly looks like he's on the edge of a nervous breakdown. So I thought I'd take him home. I thought I'd be nice. I made a portal and I dragged him over. This donkey wanted to leave too because he knows that I randomly hit donkeys for no reason. But he's staying. You're staying. Anyway, bro didn't want to go in. Uh, he just stood there. So I went to go check it out myself, and that's when I learned that you can throw items through the portal. What? I didn't know that. Not kidding, look at this. See? There it is. I'm getting distracted. So I built some stairs and pushed him in, but that didn't work either, so I gave up on him entirely. Someone in the comments said that you could get dirt from composting, and he was a liar. He was a big liar. You just get bone meal, and that's like one of the few things that I have way too much of. Day 105, I went to the nether to try and find a nether fortress for some nether warts because I needed to make a splash potion of weakness for Tuba so that I can heal him. Now, before you go down and comment about how you don't need nether warts to make a splash potion of weakness, I know, or at least I do now. I didn't then. This is very embarrassing for me because I was looking for a very long time, like a really, really long time. I came across some natives and they were saying something about this is our land, go away, we just want to be left in peace or something. I don't know, I wasn't really listening, but anyway, they're gone now. And so was I. I turned back and I gave up. But then I realised that I may be able to trade some warts with the piglins. So now it's in my interest to be friends with them. I went back to get some gold and when I returned, guess who decided to finally cooperate? That's right, it was time to let him out into the wilderness again. To be free with his kind. To roam the lava fields and graze on an unhealthy amount of hydrogen sulfide, otherwise known as toxic volcanic gases. Anyways, once I returned to my piglin, he was gone visible rage. See, this is what happens when you try and be good. That's it, no more good deeds in this 100 days, only bad ones. I tried looking for some more piglins, but could only find a child, so I went back to get an enderpearl, pearled down, and started trading some nuggets with him. I figured gold would be too big for his little hands. But then I thought maybe I'm approaching this situation with little too much logic. It's a block game, and so I gave him a full gold bar, but he ran off with it. I think I just got hustled. Eventually I did find some more piglins, and even a thing that gave me an achievement. It also had some loot inside, but I considered that cheating. Damn my moral code. Day 108, I got back to the piglins to see what they had offered me, and it was a whole bunch of stuff, 
but no nether warts, so I threw it all away. Damn my moral code. Day 109, I was killing more cows and throwing away more nether items that I wanted to keep, and also placing more item frames. However, I realized I accidentally left my shulker box back there, so I had to make a very long journey to get it back. But on my way there, I actually found the fortress. So I killed my way inside, and on day 110, I found some warts that I don't need. Oh, it's just embarrassing to watch. I'm just gonna remind you once again that this whole time I've been looking for warts to make a potion that doesn't require warts to make. I came across some loot, but I knew that I couldn't take it. I just wanted a peek. But now look at this, look at this. I just ran straight past that one. Now that is strength. I don't know about you, but it's killing me not knowing what was in that chest now. I got into a bit of a disagreement with the piglins. I said it's my land, they said it's theirs. Same old story. And then I tested the nether enderman. They don't attack either. For some reason, I thought I could make this jump. I have, I have no idea why I thought I could make that, but luckily, I saved it. When I got back, I started growing the warts, and on day 111, I started brewing. Yay! I started brewing potions of poison, not potions of weakness. Oh, it just gets worse. Oh, it's just getting hard to watch. Oh, no, he just did it on himself, trying to close the fence gate. Oh. But anyway, unsurprisingly... <laughs> The, the splash potion of poison didn't work to change the villager back, and after many attempts, and even letting him out, I still hadn't caught on to the fact that I'm doing it wrong. But on day 112, I finally did, and made the splash potion of weakness, splashed him, fed him, and then watched him. When he turned back, I was excited to buy my book on the cheap, but his trades reset. Yes, they, they reset. I couldn't believe it. I spent day 113 resetting his trades until he gave me protection 4. So I went and made some books, came back, and it had reset again. I can't... <laughs> But on day 114, I finally got the mending trade and quickly bought something from him so that he'd be fixed to his trade and got eight mending books for eight emeralds. That's right, one emerald each. To his face, I was like, yeah, yeah, no, that, that sounds about right. But really, I was thinking, is this legal? Am I stealing from this man? So anyway, I put mending on all of my armor and diamond tools and spent the rest of day 114 grinding XP to repair it all. And by 115, it was all good as new. I found this guy at the bottom of the pond and... Well, iron is pretty dense. It doesn't float. So, uh, yeah, this is your life now. Also, where did all these new fish come from? On day 116, I made a disenchanter. I forgot, I forgot what they're called, but I enchanted and disenchanted my new axe until I got a pretty decent one that I was happy with. I then used it to start construction on a new villager farm, but we're gonna call it a villager spa. That's right, it's where villagers can come and relax. And in between relaxing, I may or may not turn them into zombies for better trades and force them to breed. But on my island, this is the price you pay for a villager spa. I mean, it's better than their current deal anyway. But then I realized I placed all the slabs on the wrong level and had to take it all down again. But it was coming together. It was also being used as a mob farm, but it was coming together. Day 120, I was chopping down these big dark oak trees. I thought it'd be a nice choice of wood. And for the first time, I used scaffolding. And I think I'm the only person to my knowledge that has ever used scaffolding in Minecraft. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong but I, f I personally forgot it even existed. Day 121, I was continuing the build and starting the entrance to what will be the end portal room, but that's a 300 days job. Once I started placing the quartz blocks, I realized that the cobblestone had to be replaced with quartz also. It just didn't work. It wasn't giving off the villager spa vibe, so I started replacing it, but I had to run back to the nether to get some more quartz because I'd run out, and it was here that this ghast blew up my portal. It was not good times, it was bad times. But luckily with the fire from the gas ball I actually managed to get some wood on fire and get the portal lit again. I spent the rest of the day farming blocks I need, I mean sure technically it's not doing it legit, but for the sake of entertainment I don't want to be mining for hours to get enough quartz for my island, so as long as you guys forgive me, I forgive myself. On day 125 I carried on with the floor and the lights, and this farm is becoming more chaotic every passing day. Then I made all the beds, placed them down in a satisfying shape, and then started to get my villagers over, who looked quite sceptical about the whole thing, but I reassured them that everything would be fine as long as they just ate carrots and nature will do the rest. Because that's how it works, right? Everyone knows that. Then I deconstructed the old farm and made sure the villagers were happy on their first night. That's the what has my life become face. Day 128, I carried on deconstructing and started on a staircase to go up to the new tree farm. That's right, I'm moving it again. And I'm also moving the graveyard because it's getting in the way of the villager spa entrance, so I found a better place for it. Day 129, I was still feeding them carrots, and I'm starting to grow like a small community down here. Now that the golems are patrolling the island, the only thing that actually poses a threat are creepers, since for some reason, Golems don't have a problem with creepers. I went and asked how their stay was so far, and I don't speak villager or anything, but I'm pretty sure they're saying it's the single best thing that's ever happened to them in their lives, and they would love to eat more carrots and can't wait to trade more things to me for really acceptable prices. That's what you were saying, right? 
right? The entrance was finally finished, and so I spent the rest of the day mining cobblestone into day 130. This is a taster of all of that amazing content that doesn't get shown. I then replaced the stairs with some stone brick instead to switch it up a bit, and then took my enchantment area down along with the nether portal and the farm. And on day 131 I woke up next to a polar bear, fed the villagers, and now jokes aside they actually do look pretty happy, right? Like for a block NPC with no facial expressions, they look pretty happy. Then I started work on a new farm. Days 132 and 33 were spent finishing it off and making bigger sections for each animal, and it was looking pretty good. So on day 134, I woke up next to a polar bear and spent the rest of the day moving all the animals out. And to give an idea of how ridiculous this old farm is, this is the chicken coop. Yes, this area with all the iron golems and horses in. And there was one chicken in the whole thing. I had to kill a couple of these guys because they weren't moving out of the area. And then on day 135, I replaced all the floor with stone, trapped this donkey down below, and placed down my enchantment table. On day 136, I fed all the farm animals and started breaking a load of gravel to get flint to make some fletching tables. Placed them all down, the next day I brought Tuba down with the other villagers, but he didn't look too happy about it. Now that I had 5 million fletchers, I started work on the new tree farm that took much longer than expected to collect all of the cobblestone and then smelt it, but on day 140, it was done. I haven't built the walls yet, but I'm a man on a mission. I don't have time for building right now. I spent the rest of the day farming wood to make sticks to trade with the villagers. And the whole of day 141, I was just doing the same thing, just trading sticks, just, just straight up trading sticks. These guys love sticks. I'm not sure exactly what they do with them in prison though. I, I mean in, in, in spa, it's not, it's not prison. Day 142, I decided to make more space. I covered the pond with glass, but don't worry, I checked if turtles can survive underwater in Minecraft, and they actually can. It was looking good. The next day I finished it, and then noticed my horse was under there. This is also his life now, because glass is way too expensive in Skyblock to be breaking and wasting, and he's just not worth it. He's just not. I did find the other chicken in the pond, though. I placed a load of lectins and got a sharpness 4 trade, so you know the deal. It's time to let a zombie at him. I made an area for the mobs to spawn and waited until night time. Also, can we appreciate that transition I just did? That was smooth. You gotta admit that was smooth. After not very long, mobs started spawning in thick and fast, and my plan was working perfectly. Apart from, in the process of attacking him, they also hit him off into the void. I probably should have seen that one coming. Day 144 I spent trying to get some good trades and didn't get any, but the next day I got another sharpness 4 trade, so I took him upstairs to be attacked by a zombie this time, but I guess I was too far away from his lectern, because when I got back, he was just a normal boy. I'm actually hopeless with this game. Day 146 I thought, you know what, stuff it, I'm just going to work on getting some cheap armour so that I can enchant a load of it and make a maxed out set, so I spent the whole day levelling up some villagers. Day 147 I was farming more emeralds, and day 148 I had my first bit of diamond armour from this guy, but I just couldn't understand why they were all just trading leggings, no matter how much I maxed them out. <laughs> Ugh, can you tell this is my first time trading? It, it's even hard for me to watch back. If you don't understand what I'm doing wrong yet, just hold tight. Just hold tight, all will be revealed soon. Day 149 to 151, I had a break from trading with villagers and spent some time decorating my island with some bushes that I thought looked pretty cool. I try and keep building to a minimum for entertainment, but if you guys want a 300 days, I'm gonna go all out on building. The rest of the day I spent kidnapping this villager for a zombie. This guy escaped, so I pushed him into the end. Cause that's just what you get for escaping. Listen, I don't make the rules. Oh wait, yes I do. And that's a new rule. I trapped this guy in, and on day 152, a single zombie had spawned, which was perfect. I led him in to have some alone time with the villager, and went back to speak with the others. This guy was saying how his son heard screaming, and I was like, nah, what? What? Screaming? No. No, you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Relax. This is a spa. Just relax. When I returned, it was done. I healed him up, and then he was cured. I'm trying to do a happy jump right now, but I'm just hitting my head. He's like, bruh, what have I woken up to? Anyway, I leveled him up, and then realized that you can scroll down, and he has more armor. Yeah, that's right. You know all those villagers that I maxed out? Like six villagers that I maxed out that only gave me diamond leggings? Yeah, well they didn't. I'm just an idiot who didn't think of scrolling down. You live and you learn, I guess. Anyway, now I had this dude giving me trades for super cheap, like one or two emeralds per item. So I bought a full set, and on day 153, I disenchanted all of it, and kept enchanting until I got some good ones. And since it was so easy to get XP from my farm, I thought this was the best way to get my armor maxed out, and by the end of the day, I had protection 4, unbreaking 3, and mending on everything. Day 154, I did the same thing to this weaponsmith, so that I can get some good weapon trades. I healed him up, and then tried to go to bed, but then realized that he's actually just below my bedroom. Hey dude. So I went down to give him some moral support, and on day 155, I maxed him out, and firstly upgraded my axe to efficiency 5 by enchanting a new one and combining it with the one I already had. Day 156, I spent mining cobblestone because you can never have enough cobblestone, and on day 157, I was appreciating the sunrise. 
Also, if you want to use the shader I use, I'll leave a link in the description. I couldn't stand seeing this sheep shivering anymore, so I thought I'd give him some grass. He thought I was letting him free, but that was only temporary. When I got back from making some leads to drag him back up, all of the iron golems in the world suddenly had a fascination with this tiny enclosure. But once I pushed them out and dragged the sheep in, he started eating straight away. So he must have been hungry. So now he's not a cold, hungry and bored sheep. He's just a bored sheep. I spent the rest of the day and into 158 maxing out my diamond sword. And when I say maxed, I mean maxed. These cows stand no chance now. I mean, they didn't before, but now with my looting enchantment, I didn't have to kill so many to make the rest of my item frame. So it worked out pretty well for them too. Day 159, I smelted my ancient debris and made some netherite to put on my sword. And now I can actually say that it's maxed out, maxed out maxed out. Day 160 I was back to mining trying to find some more ancient debris but instead all I found was a ghast, a llama and a doggy. I'm not sure what the llama did to these iron golems to deserve this but it paid for it. The next day I was farming XP and I was getting so many good bows from the mobs now that I have looting three on my sword that I started combining them to make a pretty good bow. Then I sorted out all of the mob loot that I collected and there, there's, there's so much, there's so much. This mob grinder is actually insane on Skyblock. Then I combined my new bow with my old one and made an unbreaking three, power five and punch two bow. Now all it needed was flame, which I have, but it's expensive. So I thought of ways to get XP and disenchanted everything that I have, which was barely anything and was completely not worth it. I also tried smelting the armor I got from the mobs, which actually worked but it just smelted it into golden nuggets, so it's not even worth my time. But after more disenchanting, I could finally get flame on my bow. On day 163, I went to the end, and when I got there, I found that villager that tried to escape, and also an endermite. I accidentally hit the villager off trying to hit him. My bad. For some reason with the shaders, this place made me feel like a bit sick, like I could actually feel how thick the air was. It looked amazing, but like, amazingly disgusting. Anyway, I'm here for some elytra, so I towered up to the portal and went through but I couldn't really see anything, so I had to turn the shaders off to find the tower. I left some landmarks to find my way back and set out to get me some wings so I don't lose all of the armor that I've just made if I fall off my island. It took ages to find the tower, but eventually I did, and once I broke in, uninvited and unwelcomed, I also found some pretty good loot. Apart from this chest. Anyway, I found the ship, killed the thing, took the loot, and got my wings. That kind of rhymes. Not really, but kinda. Also, I found that this is where you get the dragon head from. I've always wondered where you get the dragon head from. So I took it and flew off. That's right, I came prepared with rockets. And after a very long time of flying around, completely lost, my elytra had already worn down to its last bit of health. Like if I looked at it wrong right now, it might break. So I had to spend the rest of the journey looking on foot, but eventually I found my landmark and made it back. As soon as I got back, I tried enchanting my elytra, but it didn't work. So I went to get a mending book from Tuba, slapped it on there, healed that boy up and took to the skies. Place down my dragon head and then name my pick as usual. It's a very accurate name. On 167, I disenchanted all of that loot I got and enchanted two shovels. I had the best luck here because I got efficiency four enchantments right next to each other. And so I combined them to make an efficiency five shovel. And now all of my tools are maxed out. I spent a while just flying, to be honest. It's super fun. Then I got back to mining for some more ancient debris and found a piece pretty quickly and also an Unbreaking 2 book and a mob head. I used the Unbreaking book on my elytra and placed the mob head next to the dragon. Day 168 and 69, I was still mining. I found another ancient debris and I was also fighting off some shulkers and pretty much everything else. I had a lot of help from my iron boys though. Day 170 I went back to the end because mining is a real hassle now. I have to keep running up to the chest to empty my inventory from all the random blocks and it's taken ages. So I thought I'd go back, collect some shulker boxes so I can transport all of the blocks to the sorting chests while I'm mining them. I warned them that I'm coming up because that's just fair game. Stole all of their stuff and, and kind of slaughtered them, I'm not going to lie here. I even took their banners. I told you, only bad deeds in this 100 days. I flew to the next one and did the same thing. And on the third tower, it had another boat, so I got another pair of elytra and some more epic loot. I got back to the portal and forgot to turn my shaders back on before jumping in, and saw what my island looked like without them, and it's not good. It, it, it's really not good. Oh, that's better. I made a load of shulker boxes, and then renamed them all into trash cans. I tried placing the end banners, but I guess they had a texture error or something. I don't know. 
Days 172 to 179 I was mining looking for ancient debris. I placed down all of my shulker boxes in the line and whatever I mined I put straight into the boxes. I'd fill one up and then keep packing it full so it's not just one block taking an entire inventory space up and then use them like a filtration system by just spamming the items until they fit and if they didn't they went into the next shulker box. Rinse and repeat. And it actually worked it actually worked super well I'm not gonna lie. I got mining fatigue many times, but then I remembered that you can just drink milk to lose it, which saved five minutes that feels like five hours of my life. My iron army was absolutely insane. Some, some of them started breaking, so I got iron to see if it could patch them up again. And sure enough, it actually worked. But what's really cool is that I don't even make these iron golems. I don't even have to spend iron making them. They just randomly spawn because of villagers, so I get a constant supply of guards spawning in. They do get in the way quite a bit though. I got another mob head and a lingering potion of the turtle master. I don't... It, it didn't linger for that long and I don't feel like the master of these turtles. But I do feel like the master of those iron boys. I just go AFK for a monster party now. I don't even bother, I just check my phone and wait till it's done. One of these guys escaped downstairs and I thought he killed my precious villagers, but he didn't. He had a go at these though, but that's fine. They're expendable. We got into some more fights, recovered from some more fights, and then my favourite thing in one block sky block happened. A fox spawned. I, I just find it funny that the polar bears just have this natural prejudice against foxes for no reason, and will literally go out- what is- what is happening here? Go out of their way to kill them. I finally found some more ancient debris, and then on day 177, I found some more, and another one of these guys, but I've already done my good deed. I don't know how many times I've replaced these blocks now. Is this bullying? Like, is this allowed, I mean? Here's an idea of how many monster parties I've been in just in this one play session of about an hour. I then named my sword, and then days 180 to 185 were spent sorting all of my chests, and even the chests inside my house, to get ready to rebuild the tower that's now looking like a 300 days job. Whoops. How do all of these things get in here? Who's Veronica? I finished up on day 185, and on 186 I smelted the ancient debris as I'd mined for one ingot. One. All of that for one. Then I started work on a nether room, for all things nether related. And then on day 188, well, yeah. Yeah, I just stood there in shock for a bit. I should probably put some torches up there, so that this doesn't happen again. It, it took the rest of the whole day to reorganise and fix everything. On day 89, not falling for that one again. I went to the nether and realised how much fun it is to fly around here, it's like a natural obstacle course. But anyway, I'm here for some wither skeleton skulls, and after a while, I got my first one, did some more fighting and got my second. I really wanted to hit this ghast with my sword for some reason, it was like he was asking me to. I just, I just couldn't help myself. After a while, I realised that if you just fly away and come straight back, all the skeletons respawn. I also took this opportunity to fight with ghasts in mid-air, which is easily my new favourite thing to do in the game. So after lots of fighting and flying away, and looking like I'm having a stroke in my inventory, I realised the real reason why I was here was to fly. It's so much fun, I honestly spent more time flying around hitting ghasts than I did looking for skeleton heads. It's just so satisfying. Oh yeah, I also stole some blocks, but... You didn't see anything, right? I might actually change my channel name to just Ghast Hunter and just make Ghast Hunting Coolest Moments compilations. Anyway, I finally got my last one and headed back. Also, I can actually fly down to the nether room from the chest room. Look at this. It was definitely, definitely my first attempt. So I spent the rest of the day finishing up the nether room. And on day 192, I remembered that all this time, the iron farm has been making me iron. I don't use it for anything, but maybe in 300 days, I make some epic battle with a load of iron golems. I made some armor stands and then started placing them around the island like they're guards or something. And it's a cool place to keep my armor. Then I made some custom big K banners, and they look pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty happy with them, so I made some more and even put one on my shield. I got a big K shield, but I thought, hang on a second. If I use my two netherite ingots on a helmet and a chest plate, then use my shield, it will look like I've got full netherite armor for the thumbnail, when actually, I've only got half netherite. You've all been scammed by the big K himself. Day 195, I went on a little adventure to see if I could break the game mode by going really far away in the nether and then making a portal. I thought maybe if I went far enough away, it would actually generate some new land that's actually the overworld, but it didn't. Sad times. On day 196, I started making the platform to fight the wither on, and the next day I said goodbye to my men, in case I don't see them again. And Buster. And Chonka. And also this llama. I guess. I spawned him in, ready for war. And he instantly just, just started sinking. Yeah. I, I don't know, he just... I, I kept shooting him. I even flew down to hit him. 
but he was just too close to the void and I had to come back up. I started firing arrows and I thought I was doing damage, but then realised it was just the void killing him. Bruh. So I quickly rushed back to the nether to get some more skulls. After lots and lots of skeletons, I got all three fairly quickly with my looting three. And now can we all just take a minute to appreciate how satisfying this clip is? I mean, come on. Threw away all of my nether stuff, patched in the battleground, made it a bit bigger, and then on day 199, I used all of the blocks I won't use, like terracotta, to build a big battle arena where he can't escape. It's a very colourful battle arena. I farmed more blocks of wood, and then on day 200, it was done. That's a lot of mobs. I know I could just spawn him in the nether or the end or something, but I feel like I should at least try and defeat him in this world. Or it's a bit pointless playing one block sky block. So on day 201, I came over to the death arena. Yeah, the death arena, that's what it's called now, because someone's gonna die, that's for sure. I made a base to spawn him on, placed all the blocks, and that's a 300 days job now. I, listen, I didn't even plan for that cliffhanger. It just happened. But I can't help it. You're going to have to stick around for another 100 days if you want to see who wins. I don't, listen, I don't make the rules. But in all seriousness, if you did enjoy this video, leave a like. Subscribe even if you want to. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you want in 300 days. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.